All right, what's going on? Welcome to the Hey Listen game stream. My name is Zach Hartsman, and we are continuing our playthrough of Valiant Hearts, The Great War. This is a game that I taught with well, probably five years ago now um, in my world history class. I probably keep saying different years during each of these recordings. So when I look back at the videos, it might be like, oh, five years ago, three years ago, four years ago. I'm not exactly sure how many years ago, but I have taught with this game before in my world history course. It's a great game made by Ubisoft um, about World War One, And this is our fifth session with this game. September 15th, 1916. The bloody battle of the Somme still rage on. 206,000 British soldiers would lose their lives there. The game is historical fiction, so while, like, the characters are not necessarily real, a lot of, all the battles, all these events did happen. And what's wonderful about this game is that it incorporates lots of primary resources, non-fiction texts, and artifacts into it. I wish the studio would make other games around different historical events, but in the same style. All right, so now we're Freddy. September 5th, 1916. What do we got? The Mark I tank. Developed in utmost secrecy, tanks gained their name from the British subterfuge to conceal their real purpose from espionage. Official documents instead spoke of a dice for transporting water to Russian troops. Biggest history nerd. Hey, history is pretty cool. I agree. It's why I teach social studies. The first model to roll out, the imaginatively named Mark I, had a huge psychological impact and tanks would reach their destination to find trenches deserted. The Germans, however, soon learned to cope with shortcomings. The vehicles were also unreliable and interior conditions were horrific. Alright, that's this tank over here. Cut through some of this barbed wire. Hey, thank you for following, uh, biggest history nerd. Have you played this game before, history nerd? I guess I gotta go back to the tank now. Oh, I actually get to drive the tank. And shoot from the tank. All right, there are planes coming. It's on your list. You've been meaning to play through it. Definitely recommend. It's one of the few games about war that isn't a first person shooter, right? It's just a really nice narrative game. A hey, Bearju, how's it going? And it's why that's why part of the reason why I like I enjoy teaching with this game is because it's not a first person shooter. It's actually a puzzle game. I would not want to be those soldiers in that muck. Alright, keep going, keep going. We don't care about this town, we're just gonna demolish everything. Got some artillery. Oh, my tank is busted. All right, looks like we're gonna go down here. Oh damn. Oh, I definitely ran the wrong wrong way. Do I go back up? All right, let's try that again. We're going down. This guy's a punk. Stamp that out, cool. I think I saw something on the ground over here. Yep, what do we got? Telegram from New Zealand. It's a boy, stop, Brian, stop, mother and son. Okay, stop, miss you, stop. I assume telegrams were used quite a bit. This seems like a great game to play while listening to Dan Carlin's World War One podcast. I haven't listened to that, but let me make a note of that mentally. How long is this podcast? 
history nerd. Um, all right, we wanna knock that down probably. Dog pushing up, sleeping on my feet. It's very long. Let me look it up. Or maybe if there's like specific parts of it that are worth looking into. My dog is gonna get rolled over by my chair. This happens a lot when I'm working at my desk. He falls asleep on my feet and then he's got a lot of hair. It gets rolled over on one of the wheels and it rips out a chunk of hair from his butt. Um, so I probably have to throw that up there. Destroy their little Gatling gun. And now I can go back outside. I'll take one of these with me, because why not? So if this is your first time here, this character Freddy is an American, but he's... He went to France to fight for France. This is before America's entry into the war. Okay, I gotta get back in the tank. Destroy more planes, destroy more Gatling guns, destroy planes. I don't know how many planes would actually be shot out of the sky by tanks like this, but it's fun nonetheless. Oop, we got another tank. Destroying each other. That's the, we've been chasing this guy for four sessions now. Oh, we're gonna crash into each other. It's called Blueprint for Armageddon. Six parts, ranging from three to four point five hours, going chronologically through the war. Okay. All right, we got some quick time. Events. This is like the most action you get in this game. <laughs> Way to go, Freddy. After too many missteps and too many battles lost, Baron Von Dorf was demoted and moved far from the front line. For him, a fate worse than death. But not actually worse than death. January 18th, 1917. Emil, still bedridden. See, this game follows a core cast of characters, and then you play as all of them throughout the game. And share the sad news of Carl's death. Anna set off immediately. All right, who are we playing as now? As a meal. I have to hide. So a meal was married to a woman from Belgium, I think, but he's German. New diary entry unlocked. Diaries. I've been trudging through the countryside for four months, though. I have not been reading these at all. I'm so hungry, but I can't approach. Villages I did try, but they recognized my accent and they got myself arrested. I must be careful. But he, yeah, so he, he lived in Belgium with his wife, but he's German. And he got drafted, he got kicked out of the country and then was drafted in, by Germany to join the German military. I did not, I have not read any of these. That's okay. But you could have your students read these if you wanted.
I prefer reading the, uh, like, historical info. What do we got? Winter. Like this. So winter was harsh for soldiers in the trenches, and troops suffered from the perpetual cold and damp, with temperatures often below zero on the western front. Many ended up in the infantry with frostbite, which could ultimately lead to amputation. It was important to try and keep the feet dry. Right? So a lot of this, these were, this game was made in partnership with um, these two organizations, Apocalypse World War One and Mission Centenaire. It's a French, these are both French, I believe, um, organizations. Okay, <laughs> I can't just go like smack the dogs, I need to find something to save her. Oh, so far back, that's annoying. So I need to find something to either kill the dogs or distract them. Let me see if there's anything this way first, now that I know they're over there. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oop, I got a stick. I guess I'm now going to throw the stick at the dogs, or... Do they want to go fetch? They do want to fetch. Classic dogs. Alright. And now, right, so this game, while it is a uh, wonderful game to um, teach with, about especially to teach World War One history, it is... Uh, a big puzzle game, which can often... Oops, I did not mean to do that. It's a big puzzle game, and you're constantly trying to figure things out. Norky TV, first playthrough. This is not my first play... Well, so technically it's my first playthrough, but I did watch my students play it uh, years back. Oh, run away, run away, run away. So I do know... It's been a while, but I do know, generally what's going to happen. Oh, they are searching for me. I should steal those clothes. Oh, no, nope, let's... Can I steal the horse? Alright, no one recognized me. Anything over here, nothing over here. But I do love this game. So for anyone new to this stream, I do, I stream every Wednesday, usually every Wednesday, although it's been somewhat of every other week lately, but I do stream Wednesdays at 7.30pm Eastern Time with games that I've either taught with or games that I plan on teaching with. And this is a game that I have taught with before. So here's Walt and Anna, the two other main characters. And for anyone who's interested, my curriculum for this game is available on my website, Hey Listen Games. It's a website I founded, um, and I put all my game-based learning curriculum and lesson plans up there for free for anyone who wants. So I have like a little, my, my lesson plan and my student guide and slides are up, up on Hey Listen Games for anyone who wants. It's heylistengames.org if you're interested. Alright, I need to find a wheel for the car. So that this is a lot of the game. It's like fetch quests kind of to try and figure out what to do next. So he wants to switch with someone dressed like that, which means I probably need to find a uniform to switch into. Again, so these guys also want a uniform. Okay. Can I go this way? I can go this way. I'll go back there in a second. Let me just check over here. Oh, nope. So I see a pulley system. Can't go that way. Let's check in here. What games do you find best to help teach history social studies? So it depends because there's like so many different social studies classes 
currently, this past year I taught U.S. history, but next year I'm going into teaching economics and American government. Um, but a game that I do teach with every year is Gone Home. It's not necessarily like a history game, but it does deal with social issues of the 1990s around LGBTQ plus people. Um, and I find that to be a good text to use when teaching about, oh, I'm not allowed to be seen, when teaching about civil rights. This is a, this is a fantastic game to use for World War I. Another game I use every year um, is the game Papers, Please. I use it whenever I'm teaching about immigration. Currently, I teach grades 11 and 12, but I've taught all throughout the grades in high school. So I've done 9 through 12 over the years. All right, so I have to wait for him to turn around. Run, 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 run. Hide. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Beautiful. Oh, fuck. Keep hiding. I'm gonna tell the dog to go get the... Ooh, thank you, Walt. Now I can change. Cool. Um, so I do, I do teach high school grades 11 and 12, although I should preface that. My students are also overage usually, so even though... Because it's a transfer school, so a lot of my students can be up to like 21, 22 years old. What do we got here? Sack of br bran. Wheat was rare, so cereals were used to make flour for bread. Wheat bran is darker and composed mainly of fiber, but also crammed with vitamins and minerals. Today, it is an integral part of high-fiber diets. Back in the day, it was a sign of hard times. Cool. There's like 100, over 100 collectibles in this game. Uh, one second. What's over here? Another collectible. What do we got? French emergency banknote. The French National Bank struggled to produce enough coins and banknotes, so emergency money was produced. Local authorities were permitted to draw up their own banknotes with their own design. I didn't know that. Alright, so I have the uniform, but I didn't go in here. What's, I want to check out what's in here. Um, looks like Walt can bury, dig something up there. We've got a French guard gendarmes, I can't pronounce that word, cap. French gendarmes also operated military police. Gendarmes made sure soldiers respected military law and behaved themselves at the front. So now they want me to switch into another uniform. Okay, so now I'm allowed inside here. Very cool way to teach stuff. I wish my teachers could teach that. I wish my teachers did this. Did this? They wanted. There's like three different uniforms going on. All right. I wish my teachers did this. I didn't even have a video game club at my when I was in school. Um. And originally, before I actually started teaching with video games, I was often. Um, I had a video game club for me, for my students, and that's kind of where the interest of using games as text really started off, um, because of how enthusiastic they were just about, about about playing games. So I started using games more in my actual class. Uh, before I go this way, I want to go back over here, check out what these guys were doing. I got a bottle of wine that will probably I might need to change clothes again so now I can put that over here there's another ladder what's in here this is the first building right all right, we'll, we'll come back here later if we need. Do not worry about the typos at all, Norky. That's perfectly fine. Um, 
Stop barking, dog. Alright, now I can go in here. I can go past these guys. Do I go upstairs? Anything over here? Let's go upstairs. That looks like a little doggy door. Nothing over here. Ah, oh, shit. I should have brought the wine. I had the wine before. I thought I just needed to throw it. Okay. Okay, we got the wine. Excuse me? Um, what if the dog takes the wine? All right, so my dog's got the wine. Let's see if they still take it away. Okay, so the dog's allowed to carry the wine, just not me. Is that it? Beautiful. Okay, so he's gonna take off his clothes. I'm gonna steal his clothes. What do we got? Postcard. A postcard of a luscious woman sent to a soldier at the front. Such postcards were popular among the troops. I wonder why. I don't actually wonder why. I know why. Oh! They think I'm a superior officer. How fun. Alright, and now these guys are my, my minions, so they're going to let me go walk by. Now I get the wheel. Is there anything over here? Nothing over here. What a peculiar puzzle. Yeah. So for anyone who potentially will teach with this game, have a guide handy because it's very easy to get stuck on simple things in this game and you don't want to waste too much time. Hey, Belmont, how's it going? This was actually one of my better showings. I got through this one fairly quickly. I, some of the previous, some of our previous sessions, I got stuck on some of these very simple puzzles. That dude's gonna chase me with a cane. Oh, I got dynamite. Space to throw dynamite behind me. Oh, I'm killing these people. They're dead. Oh, my headphones died there for a second. Jesus. Oh. God damn. My see, my headphones died and then I got stuck. Didn't catch this game before, so psyched to see it tonight. This game is something. I've. Ubisoft is kind of stopped making their indie games they've really kind of gone all in on like 
big multiplayer, big story, open world games. Um, oh shit. But I do hope that they eventually go back to creating more games like this, because it's, it's wonderful. Like, just choose another historical event, another war, um, and create a game using this style. Alright, killed all those three. Let's try not to die from this guy again. Oh, fuck. I'm gonna die again, aren't I? Music choice is solid, although it's definitely gonna give a copyright strike on YouTube. <laughs> Gosh, okay. Alright, we, we're, we're not all the way back though, we hit a checkpoint. That's good enough. It's like Metal Slug or something, yeah. Oop, got hit once there. Try. Oop, there we go. Clearly you have to do that multiple times. I kind of like these driving sections of the game. Dude. No. Kindly fuck off. Alright, we're into another section with cars. Come on, open your hatch, please. Oh, Jesus. Hit him! Did that do it? Alright, probably one more. Oop, I am now... Oh my goodness, there's a, there's a lot of elements to this chase. Okay. Not too far away though, that's good. I, I blew that one. Checkpoints are always nice. Alright, so he's gonna throw barrels at me. And shoot at me. Uh, 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 uh. What's the name of this song? I blank on the names of all these, like, older classical songs. Come on, open. That's a bunch of nonsense. I do think I, I hit another checkpoint, though, so we're cool. We got him, we got him. Is that it? That's not... Oh! It is. Video game rule of three. It's always three. Saint Mihail? Miel. Not French enough. And I believe that's the end of part three of this game. So now we're going to head into part four, which is the final one. There are four part chap four chapters to, to this game. Wooden crosses. Intercepted by German troops who still held Samurai. Carl and Anna. 
were led to the officer's quarters for interrogation. Carl was sent back to fight for the Germans. For like the third time. Can you hear the game at all? Oh, I wonder when my headphones turned off. An opportunity that Carl That's fine. Slip by. It should be working. Can you hear any of the game? You said you can't hear the music, but can you hear like the sound effects and whatnot? Because for whatever, sometimes things work perfectly, and then sometimes they don't work at all. All right, it looks like it should be fine. Let me know if you can if you can't hear anything as we keep playing. What do we got? I need to change back to my other uniform. Okay. Anything over here? That's another. So we got another uniform puzzle. Looks like. What do we got? Saint Mihail occupied occupied by the Germans from September 1914 as a salient on the front. Saint Mihail was a Key strategic position also stood on the railway line between Paris and Nancy. The Allies made several unsuccessful attempts to liberate the town before the arrival of American troops in 1918. Ah, that's Walt's original owner, since we kind of just found him. So I have to go that way, maybe get a uniform. Gas, gas. The gas used during the war was heavier than air, and it so seeped into trenches and tunnels. Pockets of gas might stagnate in shell holes on the battlefield, preventing soldiers from removing their masks, which were restrictive and uncomfortable. Even today, unexploded gas shells still lurk beneath the farmland and fields along the former front. Gotta go upstairs, okay. Follow him this way. More upstairs. Alright, change uniform. I still got my hat though. But now I need to find the other hat and backpack. I need a key. I see the backpack and gun. I need a code. I need a key for here. Oh, the helmet's back there. And my backpack is in here. So I need a key and a code for both those things. So let's head down. Okay, I'm allowed over here. I see the keys over there. I need those keys. I can't talk to him though. Walt's barking like crazy. All right, let's head out here. Got another wheel. What's this way? Oh, an apple. Probably need to throw that at something. No, I don't need a hint yet, right? Oh, he gave the horse the apple. Gazette des Ardennes, the Gazette, don't know, pronounce it correctly, was a daily newspaper published in Belgium, distributed 
in the German occupied zone. The newspaper was a German propaganda tool written in French informing the local population of occupied zones and prisoner of wars of German and Austro Hungary and Hungarian Empire's feats of daring do. Okay, no, I need I need the keys. Okay. Let me take another apple. Let's go this way to see if there's anything. Nothing this way. All right, maybe I throw. Ah, shit. Okay. So I need to distract him, then throw the apple, and then probably send the dog to go get it. Alright, doggy, you go get that. Thank you, doggy. No, 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 get over here. Away from that guy. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, good dog. Okay. Now we go back up. We can open the door. I can get my helmet. But now I need a combination to the safe. Don't know what I'm doing with that. Oh, oh look at the window. One, two, three. Bottom left, right. Let's try that. Bottom left, right. Bottom left, right. I think. Bottom left, right. That wasn't it? Let me go look at that window again. Or let's look at the hint. What do we got? Yes, I saw the window. Or do I like count the windows? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Was it eight, four, six? Is that a thing? Eight, four, six. Alright, I got it wrong both times. One, two, three. One with a down arrow, two with an up arrow, three with a down arrow. We got another hint. Oh, I have a flag. All right, so let's go. Let's go do that. Let's go put the flag up, and then I'll come back to the safe. Oh, you know what? I bet that flag is now in the window. That's tricky. Yep. So one is seven. Which, which way is it? Like that? 815. 815. Let's try that. 815. 
And that is it. Beautiful. Oh, what do we got? Broken French bayonet. Unlike the broader German bayonet, the French bayonet was needle-like and designed to pierce enemies and cause serious internal damage. French foot soldiers were disappointed with the bayonet's damage potential, so added notches to create further damage as the bayonet was removed. Alright, we got all our stuff. Oh, we are being attacked. That's not good. Nope, wrong way. Go down. Oh boy. They are shooting poison gas at us. I just got killed. Let's try that again. Shooting again. Relax, relax. One more time. Get inside. Oh. He did. Don't they know that's going to be illegal in a few years? They definitely know, because shit's fucked. Well, Walt's sad. Come on, doggy. Oh, gotta go down. Poison gas that way. What's over there? Well, no, he can't get it. There's a mask over there, but he can't get it. Let's go this way first. I have to put something here, right? Who puts that? What do we got? Hip flask. A hip flask could be secretly nice... Secreted nicely into... I was, secretly. Secreted nicely into a trouser or jacket pocket and generally contain a wee dram of strong stuff to give soldiers a hefty nip before strolling into danger. Or after pulling through a tight spot. Okay. But... What do I do... Oh, I know what to do. Watch, watch. I gotta punch it. Keep punching it. Punch it. That's a bunch of bullshit. That's definitely what you do. Time it. Now. There we go. Physics. A dog that's a doggy mask with his tongue sticking out <laughs> okay all right now he's gonna go get me my mask that doesn't really make much sense because <laughs> if he can pick it up with his mouth then he's probably breathing in the fumes you know all right now we go back up yeah. Ooh, what do we got? Heavy German helmet. This helmet was introduced to replace the pointed German helmet on the battlefield. It protects soldiers from shrapnel. It was much thicker than the French model and offered better protection. Its rim even protected the ears. 
the price of such protection was that it was much heavier, 1.32 kilograms as opposed to 0.58 kilograms, the heaviest helmet ever to have been produced. All right, not this way. So I guess we go back this way a little bit. I can go that way. That guy seems to be having a little bit too much fun. Valcaro was about to finally make it back home. Freddy was joining the Canadian troops stationed at Bimini. And I do like that this game is completely before the American troops entered the war. On this day, Canadian troops led the charge. Alright, this will probably be the last section or part of the last section that we do for the day. Because my wife's out with her friends for dinner, which means I have to take care of the doggy. Alright, I guess we're just charging. Don't get hit by the bullets. Don't get hit by the... Oop! Do we know where they are? Am I doing it? That's as far as it goes. Alright, I don't know if that's doing anything. What? Nope, can't go that way. It's down here. Collectible. The Brody Helmet. The Brody Helmet was also known as the Tommy or Shrapnel Helmet. It was worn by all British Empire forces, whether British, Canadian, or Australian. Even the American Army used it when they first joined the war. Its distinctive form bought it a whole host of other nicknames. The Dish Pan Hat, Tin Pan Hat, Wash Basin, and Battle Bowler. The Germans called it the... Salashusel, salad bowl. Handle graphics are so good. I agree. I love the aesthetic of this game, and I really do wish Ubisoft would do something similar in the future. What's this thing? Oh. The coordinates. So, like, 5, just below 5, and 65. Five and sixty-five. Five and sixty-five. Now we go back. Forty, sixty, sixty-five. That's one. And now five. Beautiful. Now we can go this way. He wants us to keep going. They got another one. Don't get shot. This is why trench warfare is not fun. Oh boy, oh boy.
Freddy lives to see another day. Okay, so they want me to use this cannon, but it's missing pieces. Anything over here? Just artillery. That's missing a lever. Give me that wrench. Thank you. That did something. Canadian coins. Canadians already used cents and dollar pre-independence. In 1914, they were minted with the image of King George V. Canadians in France earned $1.1 per day, corresponding to the average daily wage of an office or factory worker. There's the dead body right there. That's very nice. Oh, the guy's like... Uh, where do I shoot? Okay, boys, hey, you. Left. Copy. Down. Okay, cool. Now we can keep going to the right. Don't get hit by the artillery shells. Oh! boy keep going Freddy keep running keep running keep running Using this as a barrier. Go this way. Oh, that's a bad guy. <laughs> okay. So I can bonk, I gotta bonk this guy. See if there's any collectible. Nothing. Alright, I guess we go up. Oh, what do we got? Crest model. Relief models of hills were made so the soldiers could visualize their objective. My headset just turned off again. That's the, it's acting all kind of weird. All right, settings still the same. Hopefully you all can still hear me. I'm gonna assume you can hear me. Yeah, I don't know why my headset keeps turning off. It's got the green light, so it's got a lot of charge. Uh, let me go over here. There we go. Raise our flag, win the battle, right?
finally managed to take the hill back from the Germans. The United States' entry into the war grew more certain by the week. The last letter from Freddy's younger brother confirmed his country's newfound eagerness. You can see, you can actually see Freddy's younger brother's eyes. Because he hasn't entered the war yet. I'm feeling fine. Can you hear me, though? Yeah, something in this game is none of the character you can see none of the characters' eyes once they're in actually in the war. Alright, it's 826. These streams are usually only about an hour, so I think we're gonna this is a good stopping point. And we'll probably The rope was detached from the other rope. Oh, got it. <laughs> um We might finish the game. So I don't know if I'm streaming next week. I might have plans next week. But in two weeks, whenever our next session is, we might finish the game. We're definitely getting towards the end. Um, so once again, this is the Hey Listen Game stream. My name is Zach Hartzman. I'm a teacher in New York City, the founder of Hey Listen Games. And we stream games that I've taught with or plan on teaching with. Or just sometimes we stream games for fun and just want to hang out. So please continue coming every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I will keep you updated whether or not I'm actually streaming every night. This summer I've been busy, so I'm not, I haven't been here every week. Uh, but also hang out in the Discord. You can join the Discord and keep talking to us there or on Twitter. I'm at HeyListenGames underscore on Twitter. Belmont pleasure as always. And I will see you all later. Have a wonderful evening.